hell It's gonna be a great Noel It's the Advent Calendar House Muffins, black and smurfs And even Garfield's Halloween We're gonna take a trip down memory Welcome to the Advent Calendar House, the official holiday podcast for people who take career advice from talking birds. It is time once again to visit the enchanted world of Rankin Bass. And over the years of doing this podcast, I've wondered multiple times which Rankin Bass Christmas special is the most obscure. And I've made a few guesses, but now I can say with confidence all of those guesses were wrong. That honor goes to today's subject, the very last Christmas special, and from what I can gather, very last thing Rankin Bass as a company ever did. So join us inside our light blue 54 convertible and buckle up as we take you on a joyride through 2001's Santa Baby. I am runt of a reindeer deemed too small for a Christmas pageant, so I guess they just abandoned me, Mike Westfall. And joining me is struggling songwriter and secret harborer of singing cats. It's Andre Bennett. Hey, Andre. Uh, they they can't quite carry a tune just yet. <laughs> Not yet. They're, you're, you're leading up to that. You're working up to that. Hmm. And, and one of a kind secret agent Partridge, unless you're following the true Christmas price index in which he's one of a dozen. It's Tim Babb from the Can't Wait for Christmas podcast. Hi, Tim. Let's not mention pears don't grow on trees. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> How is that never come up? Because <laughs> it's a magic tree. There it is. The tree's magic. Oh, you know, I forgot. I forgot the magic, uh, the the cock that fills in all plot holes. Magic. That's it. <laughs> A wizard did it. Guys, thank you for being here. I think we're all in the same boat. This was our first time watching this, right? Uh, definitely my first time. Oh, no, I grew up with this. No, I'm kidding. It's my first time. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even learning it exists. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I discovered this... A few years back, but I didn't watch it until this year. I wanted to wait and cover it and go in blind. But I absolutely don't remember hearing about it until more than a decade after it premiered. And I think there's probably a simple explanation as to why this seemed to fly under the radar. So Santa Baby debuted December 17th, 2001 on Fox, which first off, three months after 9-11. And looking back, the rest of that year was kind of a blur for me. You can tell because the Fox logo in the corner has the American flag. Oh, I didn't even look at the Fox logo in the corner. Yeah, the bug has a uh, is America themed. Is it still like that? I, I think it might still either. be like that. <laughs> Probably uh, not. But we all just kind of picture it in our heads. <laughs> it might as well be. Secondly, December 17th was a Monday night. Most people are waiting for Monday night football to start. And let's see what was on right before that at the same time as this special. Oh, Celebrity Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. I was probably watching that. I was probably watching that. I feel like of those of the, all the choices you just mentioned, I probably had the TV off. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love game shows. So Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was my jam back in the day. Yeah. And I believe I looked it up. That episode of Celebrity Millionaire was one where Meredith Vieira was a contestant because it was still Regis hosting. Oh, yeah. Regis, um, Regis only hosted the nighttime version. Even after the daytime version started with Meredith, he still hosted the nighttime version until they canceled it. OK. Yeah. So not a lot of people watch this. Probably knew it was even on, unfortunately. But surely Rankin Bass must have included it in its complete Christmas collection DVD box set in 2022, right? Nope. <laughs> because despite its name being on this, Rankin Bass doesn't even own this special. Wow. 
According to IMDb, the rights to this special belong to a company called Perisphere Pictures, which I looked up and I found this special and nothing else. <laughs> They're holding on to it. No, you <laughs> yeah. can't have it for your best of. <laughs> I'll get back to that point in a second. First, let's look at what Rankin Bass was doing at this point in time. Not much. In fact, Jules Bass was no longer even working with Arthur Rankin Jr. by this point. His name was just kept on the tin because we recognized those two names together. I was going to say, this was all Rankin, no Bass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's a 10-year gap between the last episode of Thundercats in 1989 and the next thing Rankin Bass produced which was an animated movie adaptation of The King and I, which bombed at the box office. Shocking. Yeah, I don't think they marketed <laughs> that at all. I vaguely remember that. Do you? Okay. We found I, I one. Mean, I vaguely remember it existing. Okay. Yeah, it didn't even make half its money back. And, and then this, and that's it. This aired December 17th, and Wikipedia listed the day Rankin Bass became defunct as December 18th. <laughs> wow. Wow. I don't know how accurate that is, but. What a note to go out on. Yeah. But Arthur Rankin had apparently been trying for years to get this produced. According to IMDb, he faced resistance because of its, quote, departure from traditional Christmas fare, which sounds kind of racist. That's only because it is. Yeah, no, it, it, it is very racist because the sentence continues, namely its urban setting and jazz influenced soundtrack. Oh, no, not a jazz Christmas album <laughs> that takes place in a city. I wonder how many of the songs were already like worked out when they were still trying to get because a lot like the music feels does not feel early 2000s. It feels 90s, like mid 90s. Yeah, it does. I'm like, this seems like it's something I might see on a bumper for Fox Kids back in the day. You know, <laughs> the animation does look like that, too. You see hints of classic Rankin Bass 2D animation in there, but but it definitely has that mid 90s Fox Kids feel to it. I mean, uh, I mean, you may be about to say this, but this is the first one they did when the last one they did after they got rid of their animation department. Rankin Bass. Yeah, did that and then closed up everything. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I bring up they mentioned the sentence urban setting and jazz influence soundtrack. This features a mostly black cast. So wait a second. Who was he facing resistance from to make this? I guess no one wanted to sponsor the special. Oh, yeah, true. Corporations do be racist sometimes. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it, the Coca-Cola company, thankfully, stepped in to sponsor this one. Uh, it aired once and then Rankin Bass shut down. Wow. And the Perisphere Pictures that owns this special now was apparently founded by this special's co-writer, Peter Bacallion, who had been with Rankin Bass since Thundercats. He would go on to write for cartoons like Curious George and Clifford's Puppy Days. Most recently, he's written a series of kids novels called The Fart Diaries. The Fart Diaries. The Fart Diaries. Wow. That's F-A-R-T, which stands for Families Against Rotten Teens, a secret organization that brainwashes misbehaving kids. This sounds like, like a Nickelodeon thing he was trying to write and turned it into a series of novels. I mean, I was just hoping it would just be about, you know, farts. Yeah, same. <laughs> Might be better, but... Uh, yeah, just keep it simple. I was like, brainwashing teens sounds very, like, not not even dubious. It's sinister. It's very <laughs> like, sinister. It just sounds convoluted. <laughs> just just fart, man. You, you, <laughs> what, say what, do what it says on the tin. There Let's it is. Let's have some farting action. Done. <laughs> uh, the other co-writer of this special also went on to write a series of books. It's Suzanne Collins, the author of The Hunger Games. <laughs> I was wondering how why uh, why that name sounded familiar. Wow, <laughs> that was I was like, it's kind of shocking to me that yeah yeah I don't know it's, it's just weird. So let's see what the authors of the Hunger Games and the Fart Diaries have come up with, and may the <laughs> odds be ever in its favor. I gotta tell you guys now, the only thing I knew about this going in 
was that it was inspired in some part by my least favorite Christmas song of all time. Really? This is your least favorite? Not a fan at all. <laughs> okay. It's an interesting choice, and we'll get to that because they do sing it about halfway through the special. They do sing it, <laughs> they do sing it through half of the special? Yeah, about that. <laughs> And I was wondering how they were going to fit that into a special for children. But uh, if you want to watch this, Santa Baby isn't that hard to find. You can rent it on Amazon Prime if you really want to pay money for it. Otherwise, it's well preserved in the usual places. Show hands, uh, people who actually want to pay money for it. No one's raising their hands. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the hands you can see on this audio podcast are the amount <laughs> that are raised. I'm raising my hand a little bit. Oh, I was like, I got to say, I will get to it. But the ending really like did a lot of heavy lifting for me in terms of I'm like, I did not see this coming. It did. Yeah. I'm raising my hands largely because it's mostly black. OK, <laughs> so we open with a sweeping view of New York City as we follow our narrator, a talking, singing partridge named Melody voiced by Patti LaBelle. Just look at all that Christmas spirit, honey. Yo, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. People singing, homes all twinkling, and a tree that everyone gets to decorate. I mean, she was largely like the reason I kept going. Yeah, absolutely. Love Patti LaBelle. But uh, let me ask Tim first. Tim, when you hear the name Patti LaBelle, what do you think of? Uh, I mean, this isn't going to be anything to anybody, but the secretary at my high school who met her and had a picture of her in her office. <laughs> oh, OK. All right. <laughs> but no, like, song comes to mind. Oh, uh, Pink Cadillac. No, that's Aretha. God, I knew I was going to do that wrong. <laughs> she also had a picture of Aretha and I would constantly confuse the two because of that. Sure. <laughs> like she met them both and she had pictures of one of each on. The, ah, anyway. Um, you know what? I, I, uh, I, I pass. Okay. <laughs> Can I phone a friend? Sure. If you're a normal person with a passing knowledge of music, it might be Lady Marmalade. Okay. Andre, do you have an answer to this question? Um, well, let's see. Um, well, like Tim, uh, I also remember, uh, a photo, a photo of her comes to mind when I, uh, when I think of Patti LaBelle, but replace secretary at uh, my school with my dad. Okay. Um, yeah, that tracks. But uh, I guess more to the point, let's see. Uh, on my own. No, yeah, on my own. Uh, if you ask me to, you are my friend. Um, I want you. Uh, no, I, I love you. I need you. I want you. I guess those are my favorite Patty songs. Oh, new attitude! Not not new the new attitude, attitude yeah, is a good yeah, one. Yep, stir it up is a is uh, also very good, and also the greatest tourism jingle ever. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yes. Um, please, after you listen to this episode, go on YouTube and Google Philadelphia. Get to know us because <laughs> it is. It is the, the full version of that commercial is marvelous and the jingle is sung by Patty and it's just beautiful. So in 1985, the city of Philadelphia launched a tourism campaign with the slogan, get to know us with the theme song sung by Philly native Patty LaBelle. And it's been stuck in the back of my head for almost 40 <laughs> years. It's glorious. It, it really is, is. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing I think of, despite all of the other things you mentioned. And I knew you would mention a lot. And that that's really why I brought you on here, Andre, because I knew I'm like, all right, I need someone to, to nerd out with Patty Bell about Patty Bell with. I mean, yeah, no, then yeah, good choice. <laughs> I I do love I do love Patty. Yeah. But that that jingle. They should just redo that whole thing. They should. I mean, she's still she can still she can still go. She can still. Belt. Oh, yeah. She, oh, yeah. yeah. Just just put her in a new ad and then like just throw in like, I don't know, Questlove, Joel Embiid, uh, Jalen Hurts, Bryce Harper um, and everyone who's alive from the first ad minus uh, Cosby. 
Yeah, no, he 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 doesn't need to come back. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, my phone's not ringing. I guess I didn't get the call back. <laughs> Replace him with Gritty. It'll be great. Oh, God, yes. Please, <laughs> the fanatic and Gritty. We have to put, oh, yeah. Why aren't they best friends? Uh, they are. Oh, that's it. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Sorry, Muppet fans hoping I would say How I Miss My Ex, a ballad about Patti LaBelle's breakup with the letter X, which happened. I assume that's from Sesame Street. It is from Sesame Street. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but here she is a bird named Melody taking us on a very festive looking tour of a neighborhood in the city, which she says has a whole lot of soul now, but it's hard to believe it was such a needy place just a year ago. And she gives us the old, don't believe me? Watch this. And we're shown a much less cheerful scene of the same block. No Christmas lights. Everyone's shouting at each other. Tells us nothing would have changed if it weren't for a Christmas wish by a little girl named Dakota. I totally forgot about this framing device midway through the movie when she started narrating from the past tense again off camera. I was like, wait, what's happening? Oh, right. This is all a flashback. <laughs> I forgot that it started this way about halfway through the movie. That's the only way Rankin Bass knows how to tell a story. <laughs> Fair enough. You've never heard of Santa, baby? <laughs> why, uh, why, why mess with what works? That's right. So Dakota, Dakota is voiced by Kiana Underwood, who was nine years old when this premiered, probably eight when she recorded this. What do you think, Emerald? Will all our friends find a home for the holidays? She would go on to be a voice in the Nick Jr. cartoon Little Bill as a character oh God, named going, Fuchsia. Going no. back to him. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, we're going straight to uh, she joined the cast of all that in its final season. And that's pretty much it. That That's her acting career in a nutshell. Uh, Dakota is helping put up signs for the neighborhood's animal shelter, hoping to get people to adopt a pet for Christmas with the help of her cat, Emerald. And who did they get for the voice of the cat but the 60s greatest cat woman, Eartha Kitt? Oh, I'm wasting one of my nine lives on this. Yeah, that... How did I? How did you saying that? I just made that connection. How did you? She sings the song. That I mean, that took me embarrassingly long to figure. I'm like, oh, that's why they got her a thick hit. <laughs> like yeah. when the cat started singing it again, like you said, halfway through the special, I was like, oh, that's why it's Earth the Kid. Uh, okay. I was like, they wasted Earth the Kid on this cat that has like three lines? That's such a waste. <laughs> such a waste. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, it was 2001 and they were just like, they probably were just like, you know, let's just get Eartha Kitt. She's still around. She sang the song and <laughs> she was probably like, you know, why not? I mean, when when did they make uh, Emperor's New Groove? Oh, goodness. Is that 2002? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 2000, 2000. So she is fresh off of Yzma. Yeah. So she's in her... Uh, her uh, voice acting phase and she's probably like you know it's an easy paycheck and yeah that makes so much sense now and she probably liked the script maybe hopefully i don't know it, it's weird it's uh, like i was thinking about that watching it like like i i knew why they got her but thinking about how they would have gotten her like why she would have I don't know. She probably just thought, you know, this is a, this seems like a nice project. Why not? You know, and, you know, like, you hear Rankin Bass, you know, you're like, oh, OK. Yeah. The legendary specials Rankin yeah. Bass and they want to do this. I, I should probably be on board with it. Yeah. And, you know, um, also the opportunity to be, it, you know, to be in a special with like not only Patti LaBelle, but like the rest of the cat. Well, all right. Two other names that uh, <laughs> that to be, that, you know, were like, you know, heavy hitters for me. Yeah. Well, and they there's a lot of promotional material that was posted online for this. Like all of the, the photos on IMDb are like very high quality stills, considering this is from 2001. It's like really good quality. I'm thinking like tiny little gifts that I'm expecting in this gallery. But no, it's like very large. They're almost cells of this and they really wanted to hit home that look we're doing a new special it's a mostly black cast it's got a crazy cast of animal characters and eartha kit and and all the other names i'm about to introduce in a bit 
this is like when Fox was still like doing a lot of black stuff, although they were phasing out of or had had kind of phased out of that by then because this was like yeah 24 debuted this season okay i think i don't know they were doing a lot of reality stuff joe millionaire around that time oh wow yeah i forgot about joe millionaire most people did don't worry about it because it only works once and yet they tried it again did they yeah Mm -hmm. they tried a couple times they did like a second season and then after like I don't know a decade and change, they tried to reboot it. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, glad I missed those. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it all. Yeah. <laughs> the first season was, eh, I don't know. Yeah. Yep. It was. Yeah. It like the the whole hook of it. Like I was really excited for some reason about it because it seemed like a really funny idea, but once you get past the whole you know hook of these women fall are trying to uh, get this guy who they think is a millionaire, but he's a, he's really not a millionaire. And, you know, he's kind of an idiot, you know, after a while, like once they find out, it's just like, eh, there you go. Yeah. Kind of disappointing right at the end there. It just kind of fizzled out. Yeah. So this cartoon, <laughs> <laughs> the problem with the animal shelter is the animals have a tendency to venture outside or run wild or so says the neighborhood's cranky superintendent mr sweet who does not like animals and doesn't allow pets in any of his buildings mr sweet is voiced by radio host tom joiner i won't have fur and feathers in my building Ugh, messy 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 uh yeah when i saw his name i'm like Really? Tom Joyner on this? Because I didn't really think of him as like a voice actor or actor. He's not really. I think this is his only acting credit where he's not playing a version of himself. He wasn't bad. No, he's good in this. He was great in this. Yeah. And I like this character. He's a cranky superintendent, but one little kitten takes a liking to him and he shoes him away. The animal shelter's proprietor suggests, I think she likes you. And he says, no, no one likes me. (laughs) I I like that line. Yeah. (laughs) He's basically just playing Bookman. Oh, my goodness. You're right. Early Bookman. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But we now cut to Dakota and Emerald walking home. Emerald's digging through the snow and finds a bird frozen in the snow. But Dakota stops her cat from eating it because she thinks the bird's still alive and opts to take it home instead. And home is where we find Dakota's father, Noel, a professional musician and songwriter voiced by Gregory Hines. The late and great. Yeah. How'd your meeting with the producer go? Oh, just great, Alicia. Now he's telling me my music is out of touch. Wants me to wants me to imitate some new group called Street Beat. And I will ask, what is your number one Gregory Hines touch point, Andre? Uh, I, Lord, I don't even remember. Like, I remember, remember the movie Tap? Vaguely. With him and Sammy Davis Jr. Okay. And like all these oh, other. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, the Nicholas brothers are in it and like Sandman. Was Gregory Hines' brother in that too? And wrong. That I can't remember. Okay, I don't know. They did, they did bits on Sesame Street. But you're going to say something from Sesame Street, aren't you? No, I'm going to say the Muppets Take Manhattan. Oh, I forgot he was. Uh, is that yours, Tim? Uh, no, I have another one. But yes, that is uh, that is my entry point to Gregory Hines. And yeah. When I fell in love with him. Miss Piggy <laughs> borrows Gregory Hines roller skates to chase after a guy who steals her purse in Central Park. I, I love that scene. I forgot. You give Jenny the huggies. <laughs> You're right, yes. So what's yours then? Uh, there was a movie with him and Billy Crystal called Running Scared. Oh, yeah. That has one of my favorite plot twists ever, where they get fed up because uh, they get like suspended or whatever, and they get fed up. So they just say we quit and they move to Key West and start a bar. And that's midway through the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's this one scene and I just it, 
like a it's not gonna play on a podcast and b it's not particularly family friendly but there's a billy crystal is talking they like knock on this person's door billy crystal is talking to the mom uh, trying to get information and the little kid is looking out from behind the mom at gregory hines and gregory hines smiles at the kid and the kid just starts sticking out his tongue and like doing like the the fingers the (laughs) hands on the ears just making faces at him just and like gregory hines is getting more and more irritated by it like he's like and the kid won't stop until finally the the mom kicks billy crystal out and they go to leave and gregory hines says one second and he knocks on the door and the kid opens it and Gregory Hines just leans down to the kid's eye level and goes, yes, <laughs> while holding just two, one finger up on each hand. I'll let you decide which one it is. And it's just like, uh, it just made me laugh. So, like I, <laughs> I, it was a VHS. I almost broke it rewinding that part so much because I of thought course. it was so funny. <laughs> in fact, I have, I, like I, when I was like in the early, early 2000s, I had like, sounds assigned to every single <laughs> key on my keyboard oh, and the was y me. was yeah oh, every key on your keyboard yeah uh, b- typing essays in college was quite a quite an ordeal oh. um, like i had every event sound but i didn't have one for every key <laughs> i applaud you I was going to say Running Scared also had um as its big uh, hit single on the soundtrack uh, Sweet Freedom by Michael McDonald, mm-hmm. and they were both in the video. <laughs> who do who duets with Patti LaBelle on hey. on my own? There we go. That's right. Tie it back. Which was a song that was sung at one point by Kevin Bacon. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> that that song was uh, that was my that was my jam. Uh, it was on the radio, and <sighs> that was probably really kind of how I got into both of them. Okay, great entry point. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. Gregory Hines plays dad. Mom is uh, her name is Alicia, and as far as the main voice cast goes, I've saved the best for last. It's Vanessa <laughs> Williams. Woo! <laughs> Had to. Had to. <laughs> that took me a minute. Man, I am slow. Sweetie, take a break. Come with me to the Christmas party. All of our friends will be there. Yeah, and they'll all ask me, how's the new song coming? That'll cheer me up. It's a great cast, though. They could have actually played the uh, played the parents in like live action. Yeah, they could have. Yeah. Gregory Hines, man, he was ridiculously talented. He was. Him every day. So, so mom asks dad about a meeting he had with a music producer, and apparently it didn't go so well. So he'll be spending the rest of this special trying to write a successful song. But... For now, Dakota arrives home. Mom's first question is, first, Mr. Sweet didn't see Emerald, did he? So they've been having to hide her pet cat this whole time. You'd think that would be a bigger plot point to this, that they have to hide the cat. But like I said, Eartha Kitt doesn't get that big of a part in this. Also, just there's a lot happening in this special. (laughs) There is a lot. (laughs) Like, it's a little overstuffed in my... Here's here's my one of my big complaints... When you first meet Noel, he's like you, you hear him like trying to get like his this song over and try like he's frustrated about his career and about um taste changing and you know, but you never really hear what his songwriting is like until halfway through it. And then you find out he's like hot dog mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But you know they don't set that up early on. <laughs> no, they don't. You don't. You don't hear much of anything. Dakota asks her dad, "How's the songwriting coming?" And he snaps, "It's not." So she just sadly goes to her room, and later dad goes in, tries to talk to her, and she excitedly puts on a new Christmas album she got by Street Beat, which happens to be the band the producer told Noel he should write more like. And this really overwhelms him to the point where he ends up telling. His daughter, I can't handle this right now. Maybe we should do it some other time and walks out. Yeah, I actually the relationship between him and his daughter it, it was definitely kind of the in a special where there's like a lot of plot. That was a good grounding element. It was like the through line emotionally for the whole thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's the aspect that felt the most real. Mm hmm. Because, you know, parents, uh, you know, can kind of grow distant from from their families for, you know, for whatever reason. And this kind of was 
I liked how they handled that. Yeah, me too. It it comes around, but for now, Dakota's really upset. So she goes to bed with the frozen bird in bed with her. That's perfectly normal. Don't do that. <laughs> you don't know where that bird's been. And when it thaws out, it's going to get all wet on your pillow. Yeah, she knows where it's been. It, it was in the snow. It was in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> what did you get for Christmas, Dakota? Bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine, though. The frozen bird turns out to be our narrator, Melody, who introduces herself to Dakota as the partridge from the pear tree because the 12 days of Christmas was based on a true story. (laughs) That poor person's true love in all of those birds. But (laughs) yeah, shouldn't she be the property of somebody's true love? Why is she out and about? That person's true love was uh, terrible at gift giving. Yeah. Yup. (laughs) Sad. They broke up. And it's not in the song, but they broke up. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't doesn't end well. Thirteenth well, thirteenth day of Christmas, she's like, I'm done. I de- <laughs> <laughs> what are all these drummers drumming about? Right. I'm, d- I'm out. It's January. I'm not paying taxes on any of these. <laughs> well, what about the five golden rings? Okay, I'll keep those. How much milk do I need? <laughs> How many maids of milking did you hire? Hey, you'll be set up with milk for the rest of your life. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but milk spoils. Okay. <laughs> you can't just be can't just be mad milking every day. No, only no, when just, you need it. You know, they just they, they keep doing it. Yeah. And you don't have to buy it. There you All go. right. But then we come to the Lords of Leaping, and I'm like, what 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 what's what, happening? What? It's a it's a performance. We live on the third floor. The downstairs neighbors are gonna complain. <laughs> yeah, I think they're in the penthouse <laughs> in this. Yeah, but you know something? <laughs> Uh, those lords of leaping or a leaping, that means that you have your own like acrobatic like burglary troop. Oh, like Ocean's Eleven, but festive. like Ocean's Eleven <laughs> or or Jim Cotta or Jim Cotta. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it turns out Melody got knocked out by a snowplow, and that's why she was frozen in the snow. So as a thanks for taking her in and warming her up and saving her life. Melody offers to grant Dakota one wish because she is a magic wish granting partridge on top of everything else. (laughs) So Dakota wishes for her dad to write a new hit song. And at first, Melody tells her, no, that'll take too long. And right now I happen to be on some secret mission. But never mind that. I'm not going to talk about that again until the end of this. How about a new toy? She asks. But Dakota insists, if only her dad could write a new song, everything would be okay. But if you don't have time, and she puts on the pouty eyes, and that works. Melody agrees, flies over to the next room to Noel, where he has fallen asleep at his piano and wakes him up. Apparently, Melody also has control over who can see and hear her. I'm not sure how that works. It's magic. Plot convenience. Yeah. She's a she's the ghost of a partridge. That plow really did kill her. <laughs> to quote Joe Quesada, I think it's magic. You don't have to explain it. That's right. <laughs> uh, I, I have to uh, disclose that I did not watch this in one sitting like I broke it up. And I the secret mission that she mentions here, I finally realized why that plays out at the end. But I had complete again, completely forgotten about it by the time the end came around. So did I, even when I just watched it the one time. <laughs> yeah, same. It was like check off secret mission, but I had I forgot that it was even set up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Melody can also she has the power to summon the other gifts from the 12 days of Christmas at will. In fact, to wake up Noel, she summons the eight maids of milking to splash milk into his face. Gross. Yeah, a bit. <laughs> that sounds very specific for 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 certain people. Yeah, that too. Yeah, <laughs> he, he could have, he could have had an intolerance, but <laughs> hey, look, sa- look, they save it for only fans. <laughs> but Rank and Bass could have written a special about the 12 days of Christmas, but instead they crammed it into a special about Santa Baby. They knew this was their last one. Like, yeah. We got we, we to gotta cram them both in this one because we're out after this. Yeah, ran out of time, last special. That's going to come up again later. But like I said, there's, there's just too much here. Yeah. <laughs> so Melody explains... Noel has lost his groove, so she drags him outside onto the balcony, tells him to look around the city, look around his block, says, you see that? It's called life. 
That's what your music is missing, and you won't find it moping around this house of yours. She then tells Noel she'll get him a hit song if he does what she tells him, no questions asked. And I'm thinking, this is going to be some weird karate kid thing, isn't it? (laughs) And it kind of is. Yeah, kind of, actually. Uh, But the end result isn't exactly to help him write a hit song. We'll get to that later for now. First, Melody starts to brainstorm, landing on a string of garland with a bell on it, and that gives her the idea to have Noel get a job as a bell-ringing street corner Santa. Let's go get you a new job! Job? What kind of job? Santa! That's right, Santa, baby! They get the title in in the script right away. (laughs) They're not wasting time. That's all she'll call him for the rest of the special, too, but... Now we cut back to the animal shelter and meet some of the other animals, including Gloria, a pig with a southern accent who's in denial about her size. Be honest, am I getting larger? Fernando, who appears to be an iguana, who reassures her, no, the mirrors have just gotten smaller. So small, they cannot contain your ravishing beauty. Oh, oh, Fernando. I think a chameleon, because he changes colors at one point. Oh, does he? Okay, chameleon. Yeah, you're right. That makes sense. I finally paid attention to something. Hey! Either that or is it just a continuity error? (laughs) Could be, yeah. This is a chameleon. Only changes color once or twice, but there's also a bunny, a husky, a rooster, a lobster living in a water cooler, and a cute little reindeer named Samson. We always stick together! Who is voiced by Natalie Toro, who is mainly a stage actress. This is a sentence on her website. Natalie was the first American to play the role of Eponine in Les Miserables on Broadway for three consecutive years. Oh, cool. Was Santa Baby not on her bio on her website? Was that not uh, top? No, it wasn't top billing. (laughs) No, it was Les Mis. Oh, weird. Yeah, no. uh, (laughs) Also on Broadway, she's been in the musical versions of A Tale of Two Cities as Madame Defarge and A Christmas Carol as Fred's Wife. The Christmas Carol, the musical that Kelsey Grammer did, like the <laughs> stage version of that. But uh, she also performed on national tours of Jesus Christ Superstar as Mary Magdalene and in the Heights as Camila. OK, so she sounds like she's had a pretty full career. Yeah. And she sings like half of a song. <laughs> and here's that song. It's called Pick Me. Pick, pick me. me. Pick me. Please pick me. Put me under your Christmas tree. It's all the animals like lining up. And the the front window of this animal shelter when someone happens to go by and look through window shopping and they're all like doing this big song and dance number like pick me put me under the christmas tree yeah right before that they're all talking about how they're all like a family and they need to stick together and then the instant someone comes by they sing a song about how they'll step on each other's necks to get out of there <laughs> yeah they're almost shoving each other out of the way a little bit <laughs> merry christmas yep <laughs> I know every Rankin Bass special has a song or two that's really just there to help fill time. Here's this specials. <laughs> but I guess all the singing animals overwhelm the window shopper and she moves on, leaving Samson the reindeer to sadly finish the pick me song with the one thing they got Natalie Toro to do. Won't somebody put me under the Meanwhile, Dakota finds her dad on the street working as Santa. She's rightly confused. Her wish was for him to write a hit song, but Melody reassures her she's trying. It's not easy. Again, Karate Kid teaching is happening here, starting with the way Noel is ringing his bell. It's too sad or something. So Dakota tells him to give her a try with it, and she rings to an actual beat and immediately fills the bucket. Because we all know the best thing about santas is when they ring their bell in some sort of rhythm like i will i will pass by a million s- corner santas until i hear like but uh, like a bell like an actual song i'm like oh here's all my money just like you know what you've got rhythm take my <laughs> dollar she asks if she can help her dad every day after school and noel tells her no for some reason he really doesn't want to be recognized as santa and if people see dakota helping santa they might realize who he is and that bothers him for some reason I guess because he's just ashamed of uh, actually, you know, working for a living. Oh, no. 
<laughs> well, like it represents that he's given up on being a songwriter and now doing this. But didn't he have like a huge hit? I would think so. It, I, he, I, it looks like he lives in the penthouse of his building. He's got a whole balcony. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it, I thought they said something about like his last song was like a blah, blah, blah. But now you're just, you know, too old fashioned or something like that. Yeah. And so I guess the the image is like he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to be on TMZ like, oh, my gosh, look who's ringing the bell now. <laughs> yeah, but aren't they like volunteers, though? Yes. Yeah. So it's like, what what does it matter? Because, you know, everyone like, you know, like, you know, it doesn't matter like your your socioeconomic, like, you know, whatever status. It's like, yeah, nobody cares. You could just say, yeah, I just wanted to, like, give back. Yeah, exactly. No one cares. Unless the people thought he was he was collecting that money for himself personally. <laughs> Maybe that's what he's worried people will infer. Maybe. I don't know. But he even tells Dakota, don't tell mom I'm doing this. But that doesn't last very long because Alicia recognizes him pretty much immediately. Of course she does. It's her husband. Yeah. I mean, if she didn't, it would just be like a really shitty marriage. Yeah, that's true. Or she would be Lois Lane. Or she would be Lois Lane. <laughs> And her husband's dressed like Santa, so that prompts her to sing the title track. Because of course. Santa baby, just slip the sable under the tree for me. Been an awful good girl. You paid for the for the for the rights to, to it. You may as well just use it as much as possible. Cue Tim. Oh yeah, it's called Santa Baby. Oh. Like I had forgotten that was the name of I was just spending this whole time wondering how are they going to work the flirting with Santa song into this special with the kids and the animals? <laughs> I'm glad they found a way and made it not creepy. Yeah, no, it's cute when it's his wife. Yeah. And and then and they even let Eartha Kitt sing a verse in her cat voice. Santa, honey, I want a yacht and really that's not a lot. You can't cast Eartha Kitt in this and not have her sing it. Oh, that would be super awkward. <laughs> yes, exactly. They even let Patty LaBelle do a line. I really do believe in you. I'd say if you believe in me. That would have been an incredible trio to have the three of them sing this song together. Oh. But they all take parts of it. So it's still OK. I have to admit that that would. Yeah, I agree. Like, can you imagine if this had been a huge hit and like the three of them like would do that live on like, you know, it would be like some Christmas special and the three of them would come oh, on man. and do the song live together. Yeah, that would be cool. That would have been cool. <laughs> In this alternate earth. That's, yeah. a, that's a cool thing oh, that happened. Missed opportunity. But after this song, Noel, again, is really upset at the possibility of being recognized in a stupid Santa suit, he calls it. <laughs> Melody asks, is that any way to talk about Christmas? And he shouts back, Christmas? Who needs Christmas? With his daughter standing right there. So, yeah, she's been getting really upset every time her dad walks away in a huff like this. Rightfully so. Yeah, kids are watching us, grownups. No, I, I, I shut my door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine are all asleep. But <laughs> I, I I just have cats. <laughs> with the voice of Eartha Kit? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not that you know of. That would be weird. Yeah, this is this is a Garfield situation where only we can hear her thoughts. But Dakota now tells Melody, maybe you'd better just forget my wish. But Melody insists. Forget it. Honey, I'm just getting started. After these messages, we'll be right back. Wake up. The alarm clock's run. And the day be gone. Wake up, wake up. It's down to me. We got everything under the sun. We got grand muffins for your morning, cereals to get you crunching, hot cakes to get you going, biscuit sandwiches that you're craving. Food, boats, and fun. You want it? Food, boats, and yes, fun. Yes, we got it. We got the breakfast at McDonald's. We got everything under the sun. We got new food for your new attitude, so you can eat the way you want to. But we still got the tried and true. you 
like about Christmas. The music, the movies, the traditions, the food, the history, all of the above? Then the Can't Wait for Christmas podcast is for you. Tune in every month to hear a marginally successful stand-up comedian dig into topics like Charlie Brown Christmas, Bing Crosby, Scrooge, A Christmas Carol, Jingle Bells, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, The Christmas Truce of World War One, Die Hard, Bethlehem, Gift of the Magi, Haunted Mansion Holiday, Andy Williams, Christmas Lights, Nativity Scenes, Nat King, Before Christmas, Toys R Us, Silent Night, How the Grinch, Christmas, Christmas. Christmas. Miracle on Christmas, Christmas. 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 Actually, it's going to take way too long to cover all the stuff we've talked about. Just join us at Can't Wait for Christmas Pod on the 25th of every month for the Can't Wait for Christmas Podcast, where our motto is, keep laughing all the way. We cut to dark and early the following morning, and Melody flies in and wakes up Noel, and only Noel, not Alicia. Remember, Melody can control who sees and hears her. Ever want to not be observed? She can do that. But when she wakes, like she, uh, what was it? The the Piper's Piping? Is the that Piper's what Piping, yes. Eleven Piper's Piping! Oh. Okay, so I get that she, the wife doesn't hear that, but he goes, ah, when he wakes up. How does she not hear that? I don't know. That would have woken up my wife. <laughs> exactly. Like, my wife snores a little bit and it'll wake me up. Like, that would have woken up me and I'm the heaviest sleeper in this house. <laughs> She must be a really, really sound sleeper. <laughs> I guess so. She's plum tuckered out. That's right. All that Santa baby dancing. <laughs> yeah. So Melody tells Noel to suit up, takes him out to do a coat drive around the neighborhood. Great idea. Yeah, actually it is. Sure. And the detail here that becomes more important later is that Dakota helps speed things up by tying the animals from the shelter to her dad's shopping cart and sending them racing across the neighborhood collecting the coats. Shopping cart full of clothes being pulled by a husky, a bunny, a pig, a chicken, and a rooster. Excuse me, it's a rooster. We hear it crow. And a reindeer. The lobster's riding in the cart and the chameleon's riding on the pig. I mean, they're domestic partners. Yeah, that is implied that they're that they're a couple. Yeah. I feel like they were going for some sort of Kermit Piggy thing there. Oh, wow. I didn't even think of that, but you're right. I didn't either. Actually, that's a really good point. Yeah, that's it. And I was going to say like, oh, but technically it's a reptile versus an amphibian. So I couldn't Eh, find a way to word it correctly, but it's close enough. It's close enough. Except Miss Piggy has no body image issues like this pig does. (laughs) And yeah, and Kermit's not as into Miss Piggy as... uh, This chameleon is into this big. No, not at all. (laughs) But Melody is sending this Santa on a bunch of different errands. We see him delivering meals to a senior center. He cleans up a playground. He paints peace on earth on a giant billboard and almost falls off the building. (laughs) All of this seemed like, remember how I kept, I keep saying there's a lot in this. Yeah. All of this seemed like really sort of convoluted and, um, overloaded at the time but it ultimately click later yeah it does it does pay off at the end even the part where he falls he almost falls to his death off of this roof but thankfully he falls down an exhaust pipe which melody optimistically calls going down the chimney practice (laughs) (laughs) but noel's goodwill catches on and some of the other neighborhood kids and even some of the older teenagers start pitching in to help I don't know if you caught this, but one of the smaller kids, the only white kid I could find in this special, just in the background here, looks a lot like one of the kids from an older Rankin Bass special, Twas the Night Before Christmas. Wouldn't be surprised. Hmm. He's got like the same style face from that. There's a very specific style of face in that one special. I wonder if that was like an intentional like reference or like, look, this is already designed. Use this character template. Let's go. (laughs) I think it was intentional because they're sprinkling in these little touches. The billboard is in the Rankin Bass font. Like, hey, it's us. (laughs) Bye forever. (laughs) But the older kids, we actually saw them earlier kind of being rude to everyone they pass by. But now they're full of Christmas spirit and they start singing a hip hop jingle bells. (laughs) Dashing with my babies through the snow one day In a kind of funky, freaky one-horse open sleigh Through the streets, through the alleys, through the fields we go Feeling very fine, we party all the way This Jingle Bells was like definitely the thing that like 
exclude me. Like, oh, this just feels super duper 90s. Like this, like this is what Jingle Bells would be like if it was cool. Yeah, and then someone else starts singing like the actual version, like in a jazz style. Yeah, it's the newsstand guy. That is not Jingle Bells. This is Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells. Who is the voice of the newsstand guy? I can't remember. Lawrence Clayton plays the newsstand man. He's another Broadway actor. Was in uh, Dream Girls on Broadway. Okay. But then Alicia kind of shows up at the end and sings the last verse in that jazzier beat. It's, it sounds a lot like the Bing Crosby version, actually. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one for open sleigh. And they all come together at the end. And it's all really cute, but it made me realize, and this sounds like one of those things that cannot possibly be true. But I think this is the only Rankin Bass Christmas special that includes the song Jingle Bells. Really? What? I think so. Oh my goodness. Wow. There's a character named Jingle Bells in the year without a Santa Claus, but they don't sing the song. Huh. I don't think it's in any of the other ones. I think they had to sneak it in here. How could they go that long without using it? I don't know. They got a bunch of weird rights to things like they did a whole thing because they had the rights to Christmas in Killarney and they wrote the Leprechaun's Christmas Gold around that song. <laughs> and they never got around to Jingle Bells until now. Wasn't it in the public domain already? Like it was written in the 1800s. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right, once again, we're going out of business tomorrow. Let's put everything in here. Yep. This is the Batman v Superman of Rankin Bass specials. We're cramming everything in here, whether it makes sense for the plot or not. There it is. But yeah, everybody comes together, makes the block look a lot merrier. But here comes Mr. Sweet to remind them. I said no Christmas decorations this year. But they're quick to remind him. You only manage the buildings. You don't own the park. Yeah, it's not like he's in city government or anything. No, clearly not. <laughs> Right around here, Samson the reindeer slides across the snow and crashes into Mr. Sweet, sending him flying into a wastebasket, and everybody laughs at him till he threatens the uh, the owner of the animal shelter, Mrs. Garcia. If she won't take care of those animals, I will. And he walks off in a huff. And here's where Dakota remarks, he's the meanest man ever. And here we actually get some backstory from her mother, who says he wasn't always like that. There used to be a Mrs. Sweet. And when she was still alive, he wasn't so lonely. And that's all we get for now. But that explains quite a bit. Mm hmm. Oh, I thought sure something more would come of that. Yeah. I mean, I guess it kind of did. Like it was more subtext than text. Yeah. We then cut to later that night in the animal shelter. Dakota's helping out there while her cat Emerald gives life advice to the little kitten who's there. Just <laughs> we need to give Eartha Kit more lines. Make her give the kitten lessons on how to be a cat. <laughs> if you're going to make it as a cat, darling, you've got to learn the following. We don't socialize with dogs, we don't roll over, and we never come when we're called. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Oh, hopeless. I mean, you know. It's cute. Dakota and Mrs. Garcia put the animals to bed and lock up, and as soon as they leave, Mr. Sweet sneaks around the back of the building turns on a water valve, and floods the animal shelter. That's what this special was missing. Attempted murder. <laughs> like, like serious felony behavior. Yeah, that'll teach you to exist. That, yeah, that, that to me was just kind of like, and then what he says later, you know, I wanted them out. I didn't want this. I'm like, you tried to kill them. You tried to drown animals. Yeah. They try to escape through the dog door, but that's frozen shut, they say. They all try to push. But here again, Gloria the pig is like not really trying. She's a minor character in this special, and they decided to give her body image issues. But Fernando the chameleon finally tells her, You must break down the door. Oh, Fernando, I am far too delicate. You're a big pig. Embrace it. And he hops on her back and they ran through the door, letting everyone escape. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> 
but all that water freezes overnight and shuts down the shelter because of all the burst pipes. So now all the animals are forced to stay out in the cold in wooden crates. Mrs. Garcia tells Dakota she doesn't think there's anything else they can do for the animals, and Dakota tells her, don't worry, I'll go get my dad. He'll know what to do. I don't know what he'll do or what I would do besides bring them inside and to heck with the super, but Noel, meanwhile, is on the phone with his producer, playing him this hokey little song about how he loves Christmas. And it's not great. (laughs) Every time I see a Santa, my heart goes pinter-pinter. No, it is not. It sounds, it's, it basically just sounds like John Legend. (laughs) (laughs) Burn. You're not wrong. Imagine happy John Legend playing for his children. But (laughs) yeah, the producer hates it and hangs up. So now Noel is in an extra sour mood right as Dakota runs in, tells him something terrible happened at the shelter. But Noel in his anger tells him, well, it's a tough world out there. But they'll freeze outside. You have to come help. Look, it's time you stopped worrying about those dumb animals and started looking out for yourself. He's just bitter. He's, you know, he sounds like John Legend. <laughs> I would be, too. Mm-mm. I don't know. I wouldn't <laughs> mind sounding like John Legend. Better than whatever I sound like now. But <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. John Legend has a great voice. Um, I just think that uh, his songs are very... Like this. Yeah. <laughs> Big theater kid energy. Uh, yeah, yes, that's a good way to describe this and John Legend. But you know something? It works for John Legend because he's he's rich and his wife is a, is like a model yep. and um and he's rich. Yeah, <laughs> three very important keys to uh, to pull off this. And this guy like is a successful songwriter. His wife is. Uh, Vanessa Williams, for all intents and purposes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's got a nice family. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what his problem is. His problem is producer hates it. Street beat. Street Street beat beat. is his problem. (laughs) His nemesis. His problem is he fears change. That's (laughs) right. And look, I'll admit to taking my bad mood out on my family a few times in my life, but I've never been like, look, kids, you got to look out for number one. (laughs) <laughs> and that breaks Dakota's little heart and in tears she tells Noel you don't sound like my dad you sound like Mr. Sweet fine don't help me I'm sorry I asked and Noel instantly regrets what he said just in time for Melody to show up and he tells her get out of my life she says I can't so Noel says fine then I'll leave and Melody summons seven swans a swimming to bring him back They don't actually swim. We don't need another flood. They pick him up by their little talons and carry him back into the room, which looks like it's got to hurt everyone involved with that. (laughs) Noel and the swans. No one's having a good time here. They're magic swans, though. They're they're magic swans. Yeah, they could be super strong. They feel no pain. (laughs) Right. But here's where Melody tells Noel the reason she's there in the first place is to grant Dakota's wish that you'll write a hit song. And apparently the reason he hasn't done yet is because he hasn't stopped thinking only about himself. Which is true. Hmm. He's been a regular Mr. Scrooge E. Grinch. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Scrooge E. Grinch. Scrooge E. Grinch. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if I was told you're about to write a hit song, okay, great. Now stand out here and ring a bell in the snow. I might be Grinchy myself. Yeah. I'm going to throw that out there. Collect these coats. Sure, sure. It's karate kid training. Later, she's going to say, show me sand the floor, and it's all going to make sense. I mean, she's trying to teach him the real meaning of Christmas. Yes. But at this point, Noel doesn't even care about the song anymore. He just wants his daughter back. So he goes out to find her. And of course, at this point, it's getting dark. It's snowing. He finds her out in the alley with the animals. I'll never love my dad again. (laughs) Ever. Listen, little kids have big feelings. Yeah. So that part kind of rang true for me. Like every time my daughter gets really upset, like she I don't think she's ever gotten upset at me or my wife like that. But she's gotten upset about things like that. 
Yeah, that that part did, did track. Yeah. Yeah, I've told my son that he uh, he can't have an, an extra candy with dessert, and I've gotten that exact level. I'll never love you again. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> I've told the cats uh, to, uh, <laughs> to get down from there. Listen, cats are like kids. You just don't have to worry about them hanging out with the wrong cats. Um, <laughs> Or maybe you do. I don't know. But they listen just as well, I'm told. Yeah, I, I'd have to tell that <laughs> there's a story there. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, Noel goes up, tries to apologize. Dakota wants none of it right now. Tells him, I'm not going anywhere until these animals have a home, too. So Noel tells her, well, there's only one thing for me to do then. And I thought he was going to bring them all back to their place. But no, first he goes to check on the mess inside the shelter. He's going to try and fix the shelter. And there he finds that little kitten who's been popping up every now and again up on one of the frozen pipes. And he tries to get her down, but she climbs up even higher and jumps out a window onto the roof. So now Noel climbs up frozen pipes after this kitten. That also tracks. No, it doesn't. There's a fire escape. <laughs> no, I mean the, the cat. Oh, the cat. Yeah, absolutely. The cat. But yeah, but they drew a fire escape in this cartoon. Yeah, it wasn't like it was just in the shot. Someone had to draw that repeatedly. Right. <laughs> it's outside. He's inside, but he, he manages to climb up out the window after her. And of course, now the kitten is hanging off the edge of the building. Love makes you do strange things. It sure does. <laughs> Noel reaches for her, but in doing so, knocks loose a weather vane, which hits a power line battery and causes a surge that knocks out all the power on the whole block. That brings everyone outside to find out what's going on, and they see Noel hanging for dear life from a drain pipe on the edge of this building. And just as he feared, they all recognize him. It's that Santa guy. <laughs> but it's time for cartoon miracles, so when the pipe Noel's hanging on breaks, he grabs an ear by flagpole, and everyone's just watching. No one's doing anything. But Noel tells him, I'm fine, just... Someone get the kitty, please. And here is where Mr. Sweet comes out to see what's going on. And here's where he says that line. I wanted your animals out. I didn't want this. Hang on there, kitty. Yeah, he wanted them dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is where his heart grows three sizes. And he goes up onto a ledge and tells the kitten to jump to him. And she does. And Mr. Sweet falls backward and everybody catches him. And then... They all walk away without also saving Noel. So if your heart is already at attempted animal murder, how much difference does three sizes actually make? That brings it up to two. <laughs> I would say maybe one and a half. Maybe one and a half. OK, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. And that's me being generous. Yeah. And then him and everyone else walk away without also saving Noel. Well, he said he was okay. I assume he meant it. <laughs> Dakota hasn't left. She's still there, but she can't climb up there. So it's Melody who gently flies Noel down from the flagpole. She could have done that the whole time. He had to learn the truth. This is the, it's the, sa showing him sand the floor. It's just like those eagles in Lord of the Rings. It's <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're right. I know that will make Tolkien fans angry. So address your letters to Tim Bab at not going to read them <laughs> dot net. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> dot biz. Yeah. <laughs> so Dakota shows Noel now that he's down on the ground safe that everyone else has gone inside to shelter to help clean it up. The power's magically back on now. Melody explains, look, just look what you got going, Noel. You see, when people forget about their own needs and look out for others, that's when things really start to brighten up. <laughs> Never mind that they also forgot about the guy hanging from the building. <laughs> <laughs> and they also somehow have tools and things to fix the house, the, 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 the shelter that they're all like. So, someone has a saw and wood. I'm like, what are you sawing? What? 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 It was pipes. Yeah. <laughs> Metal saw. <laughs> but it was they're just sawing random blunks of wood. I'm like, what what do you do with that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Patching holes in the roof. I don't know. <laughs> they're like, look, this is what we can animate. The, we yeah, can animate somebody saw. That's it. It's just like, <laughs> look, 
We've spent decades animating <laughs> elves, putting toys together with hammers. That's all we know how to do. Plumbing is not anywhere in our repertoire. No, we never had to draw a plumber before. You should have gotten Deke in here. <laughs> Noel gives Dakota a hug, tells Melody this all feels like magic, and she replies, no, it feels like a neighborhood. And that finally gives him the inspiration he was missing to write his song, which he does inside the shelter by painting sheet music on the wall. As he sings his new song just off the top of his dome, Called the heart and soul of Christmas. You can have Santa and a carol and choir. You can have a reindeer and a Yule log fire. Twelve drummers drumming, five golden rings. But the true joy of Christmas must come from within. Just like John Legend. Just like John Legend. <laughs> it's actually Gregory Hines singing, which is great. And for a Christmas song, this one isn't bad. It's decent. I mean, it's Gregory Hines. Like I said, he's like, he was, the man was stupid talented. Yeah. And the fact that he died so young is, to me, one of history's biggest tragedies. I'll co-sign that, yeah. Yeah. So this special did get a soundtrack, but I can only find it available on CD. No digital release anywhere. Like, I couldn't even find it uploaded to YouTube besides this special. But Noel asks Melody how he can ever thank her, and she replies by summoning five, five golden, golden rings, rings, which creates some kind of whirlwind that magically transports Noel, Dakota, Emerald, Melody, and Samson the reindeer, who conveniently stepped into frame, to the North Pole. What? This is where I was like, I thought the special was over. What are we doing? No, 38 <laughs> minutes into this 44 minute special with Santa's name in the title. And we're now just revealing, oh, yeah, we can go to the North Pole whenever we want. <laughs> so it turns out Melody works for the real Santa Claus. And that mission she mentioned once very briefly near the beginning was to find someone to take his shift for him for the year because Santa broke his leg while skiing with Mrs. Claus. And the real Santa is black. Yeah. And the real Santa is black. Oh, I saw black Santa at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and he was fantastic. Oh. My my uncle was a Santa once. Yeah? Uh, it it might have been more than once. It's a long time ago. Oh, funny, fun fact. My uncle, also a professional songwriter. Oh, yeah? Yes. My uncle wrote uh, Casey and JoJo's All My Life. Really? What? How have I never known that? I thought I told you. I don't remember. I might have forgotten. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm a bad friend. <laughs> but look at the joy when he found out again. That's a lot of joy, man. <laughs> he and uh, JoJo wrote and produced it together. Wow. So, yeah. Um, art imitates life, I guess, or... Yeah. Art imitates life. Yeah. I, d I don't know who's doing Santa's voice, unfortunately. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Claus. Are you all right? Oh, yes, my dear. Oh, just can't keep up with Mrs. Claus on the ski slopes. Thank goodness Melody found a stand in for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who'd she get? He sounds familiar, though. He sounds like he could have been any one of these other actors, like doing a doing a second thing. I thought they were going to get I, I was expecting someone super huge famous. Like, I'm like, oh, here comes Santa. It's going to be like, you know, James Earl Jones or something. Oh, that would be great. I'm really looking forward to this Danny Glover thing that Disney Plus is doing. Yeah. What Danny Glover thing? D Danny Glover is Santa in some Disney Plus show called oh. the Naughty Nine. It looks like oh, it's like a kid's Ocean Eleven. And they're uh, second time I re referenced Ocean's Eleven in the show, uh, but they're breaking into the North Pole because they all were naughty and didn't get anything. So they're going to try and steal presents for themselves. Oh, uh, and Santa Danny Glover looks too old for it. I uh, <laughs> I hope it's better than Jingle Jangle. Oh, you didn't like Jingle Jangle? You know, I, I really wanted to like Jingle Jangle and I just it, it didn't. It, I don't know. It, it, it didn't work for me. In fairness, I only watched it once, but I and I haven't watched it again, but I liked it. I liked it fine, but again, I also watched it the one time. Same. I mean, I watched it only once. It just felt like a little too pat for me. 
maybe a little, I don't know. It, it, it felt like it was missing more or less what Melody said. It was, it was missing life. It was missing life. I think part of it is I'm all about Keegan Michael Key because I feel like Jordan Peele is doing really well, and I feel like Keegan Michael Key is not. So I like I root for him in everything <laughs> he does. <laughs> he was towed. I mean, he's doing fine. Don't he's get me wrong. Fine like, now, yeah. Just if you, you know, it's like Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill. Like Mark Hamill is doing fine for himself, but when you're standing next to Harrison Ford, you're like, man, okay, yeah, just stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Keegan Michael Key is is Jordan Peele's Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but yeah, all those errands, Melody had Noel do the bell ringing, the coat drive, the going down the chimney practice. It was all karate kid training to fill in for Santa. And with another wave of her wing, Noel changes into a more traditional Santa suit, complete with a white beard. And Dakota is now wearing a pink elf dress, just like the lady elves from the original Rudolph special. Just reusing those model sheets. <laughs> they might as well. I'm glad that they kind of threw in that little Easter egg there. Uh, not to throw a monkey wrench in this, but if you can use this magic to change everybody's clothes, can't you use your magic to heal a broken leg? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work on bones. <laughs> All right. I don't make the rules. Also, should you maybe not do go skiing the before the one day a year you have to do something? Well, we don't know when he was skiing. He could have been laid out for... Oh, wow. It's just like, look, it's not recovering as well as I hoped. I'm just saying, maybe do, maybe take some cautions before the one day out of the 365 yeah. where you've got something to do. You live at the North Pole. You could have been skiing in July, <laughs> giving yourself some time. <laughs> just thoughts I had. Good thoughts. Good thoughts. So, <laughs> well, good. Good is a strong word, but I'll take it. Good for this purpose. <laughs> good for this show. These are the kinds of notes that I take all the time. So. <laughs> Now Noel is the real Santa for the night, and off he flies with Dakota, Emerald, and Samson, who rides in the sleigh, not quite big enough to join the team yet, even though I only counted five other reindeer. What, did the other three have skiing accidents, too? <laughs> yeah, man, that was one heck of a ski trip. Yeah. You'd think they'd be better at winter sports, but... It was water skiing. That's what they don't tell you. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Didn't specify. Anyway, we get a montage now of Noel flying through the Northern Lights as we get an equally colorful techno remix of Eartha Kitt singing Santa Baby in her cat voice. It's just like the shopping cart, remember? Shopping carts don't fly. Santa Baby, just slip a sable under the tree for me. Which is also on the soundtrack. This was not necessary, but fine. That's a great that I that's a great blurb for the back of this DVD. Not necessary, but fine. Mike Westfall. <laughs> it was perfectly cromulent. There it is. <laughs> During this montage, we see Santa Noel stop by the shelter and deliver all the animals to new homes around the neighborhood, including, of course, giving that kitten to Mr. Sweet. We all knew that was coming. <laughs> and by the end of the night, Santa Noel can barely stay awake. But Melody assures them, oh, the reindeer can fly back to the North Pole on their own. Why did you need a Santa then? Because <laughs> the reindeer don't have opposable thumbs. And OK, all right. Yeah. But then we fade to Noel back in plain clothes, asleep in his own chair with Dakota asleep on his lap. Was it all a dream? No, it wasn't, because Noel finds sheet music of the song he painted on the shelter wall on the arm of the chair next to him. And a pink scarf for Dakota. They should have let her keep the whole outfit. <laughs> Fine. But she's not mad. Right about here, they get a knock on the door. It's Mr. Sweet coming around to announce a new regulation. Pets are welcome. My, oh my. Well, I can't seem to get rid of a little snowflake here. I had to give her a name. And I'm not moving out. I thought that was a good line because I feel like it was kind of a throwaway line as he was walking away. I'm not going to evict myself. Yeah, it's just like, I'm not throwing. I'm not getting out. <laughs> Throw myself out. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was a good line. So fine. The rest you can have pets, too. Yeah. That's a sweet little ending. And, and, and that's it, really. Melody reprises the heart and soul of Christmas song, wishes us a cool Yule, and roll the credits, which are in Comic Sans. <laughs> That's what killed Rankin Bass. Poor font choices. Yeah. 
Then uh, Mr. Sweet said, I have to go now. I'm late for my radio show. (laughs) (laughs) Or more likely, we're coming back from a break. I've just been recording this during the commercials. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, oh, oh. It's the Tom (laughs) Joyner show. (laughs) Uh, No, but it's a shame Rankin Bass had to fizzle out like this, but this was fine. It was okay, yeah. Uh, I did not think I was going to like it. Uh, ten minutes, like ten minutes in, I'm thinking, "Oh God, this is going to be a slog." Uh, but by the end, I thought, you know, this actually was better than I thought. When, like, when they take him to the North Pole, that's when I sat up, like, "Wait, what am I watching?" I, I know that's way late into it, but I'm like, "Wait, you got me at the end." Like, that's what they say: close strong, and they did. <laughs> yeah, I really liked that they chose to emphasize the importance of community. I thought that was great. Yeah. From what I read, this was something Arthur Rankin really believed in and pushed for. And while it's unfortunate that it took so long and ended up being the company's swan song, something had to be last. And I'm glad he was able to make this a reality. Uh, oh, wait. Rankin was uh, Rankin was the one who was born in uh, New York City. Bass was the one who was born in Philly. Yeah, Bass was born in Philly. He was gone by then, unfortunately. But yeah, man, I wonder he could have gotten Patty the Bell way earlier. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, this could have become a classic if, if Jules Bass was still around and if it was still owned by the same people who own the rights to every other rank and bass special. This could have had some lasting power. Maybe. Yeah, I think probably like if, if this had just been shown a lot, I think you, we, we would have like it's not. It's not marketably worse than a lot of the specials that get shown every year. Right. But like because of the rights issues, like it's just it's just been sitting in a vault somewhere. Yeah. And like it's not been played over and over again. I'm I'm sure like you'd be like, you know what? This has a charm to it. Like you would have a nostalgia for it. Mm hmm. Certainly, you know, kids of that era would. It's just unfortunate that it, you know, it got sidelined because Rankin has went out of business the next year. The next day, and now it's a footnote. It's just uh, this is the last thing they did after a more than 10 year hiatus. And that one King and I movie. The making of this could be a movie in of itself. It could be. Now, yeah. But thank you both for taking this extremely long scenic route to getting to the bottom of this often overlooked special. I mean, this is like probably the only reason I I watched it anyway. Thank uh, you. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, but I, I gotta say, um, you could do worse. You could do oh yeah, you absolutely could do worse. This was There's this was charming. Blurb. Yeah, you could do worse. <laughs> well, on that note, if people want to decorate your Christmas tree with some decorations bought at Tiffany's, where can they find you on the internet? Andre. Well, my cash app is <laughs> <laughs> um they can find me um on all the socials at Andre Bennett go. Uh, it's geo like teen Titans go, but Andre Bennett, because that's my name. Um, I'm trying to find reasons to get off of the social media thing, formerly known as Twitter that I refuse to call by its current terrible name. Yeah. I think it's perfectly okay to dead name a social media place like that. They don't have the same rules. Okay, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. And also, um, I'm not fond of its uh, current um, person in charge. This is not the first time this has come up this season. You're in good company. (laughs) So, yeah, you can all find me uh, at Andre Bennett Go everywhere else, like um, Threads, Blue Sky, Instagram, uh, TikTok. Uh, TikTok is mainly just videos of my cats. (laughs) And big selling point. Yeah. But I'm there. Find me. Uh, and Tim. Uh, well, you probably just want the podcast me, not the actual me who says stupid jokes. So to find me on social medias, it's can't wait for Christmas pod on threads, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and just Christmas pod on the social media app, formerly known as Twitter. Folks, please check out all of their stuff. You're in for a great time. Those links are in the show notes of this episode. If you can't see show notes in whatever you're listening to this on, you can find them all at adventcalendar.house. And you can also go there to follow me as well, wherever I wish to be found when this airs. (laughs) 
Thanks for listening. I hope to fly back into your podcast feed in just a couple of days. Until then, for Tim Babb and Andre Bennett, from a flagpole I've been dangling on for like 10 minutes now while everyone else rescued some other guy in a kitten. This is Mike Westfall with your friendly reminder to mind the icy patch and hoping you keep the heart and soul of Christmas in your heart and soul. Good night. Next time on the Advent Calendar House... Tomorrow night on Lois and Clark, they say Christmas brings out the kid in people. But this is ridiculous. A real Scrooge fills the air with a mind-altering drug that makes people act like children. And it won't be pretty. What do you mean? I'm as mature now as I was when I was 12. Like I said, it won't be pretty. Listen, boy wonder, I'd like to see what you were like when you were a kid. I bet you that you were the worst.